Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things, and welcome to the penultimate day of Thomas Hardy. Today I'm going to be talking about my second favourite Thomas Hardy novel, which is, after much indecision and thinking, probably far from the Madden crowd. Chapter 1. Description of Farmer Oak. An incident. When Farmer Oak smiled, the corners of his mouth spread till they were within an unimportant distance of his ears. His eyes were reduced to chinks, and the diverging wrinkles appeared round them, extending upon his countenance like the rays in a rudimentary sketch of the rising sun. I think that is possibly my favourite opening to any Hardy novel. So Far From the Man and Crowd was published in 1874, and it is probably my second favourite Thomas Hardy novel. I say that because in all actuality, my top two favourite Hardy novels are probably more like joint first favourite Hardy novels. And I feel like the book that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, if I hadn't studied that at university, I wouldn't love it more than Far From the Man and Crowd. I feel like that's the only reason that really separates these two, because they're both two incredible, incredible books, and I love both of them a lot. Far From the Man and Crowd is a wonderful, incredible, beautiful book. It was the first Hardy novel I ever loved. I had read Tess the D'Urbervilles and The Mayor of Carterbridge before this, but although I liked both of them, they weren't anything special to me. They didn't really move me in the same way that when I read Far From the Madden Crowd, Far From the Madden Crowd did. I also love Far From the Madden Crowd because, like many other Thomas Hardy novels, it has this thing where there are moments in it which you think are happy, and then later, looking back on it, you start to wonder if really they were that happy after all, and that's something I really love about Thomas Hardy's writing and the complexity of it, and it's something I really love about Far From the Madden Crowd. There is so much I love about Far From the Madden Crowd, but before I tell you about all the reasons why I think it is an incredible book and one of the best Victorian novels out there, I better tell you a little bit about what it is about. So Far From the Madden Crowd is one of Thomas Hardy's much better well-known novels, so you may well know already, but basically it follows the character of Bathsheba Everdeen. What a great name. Bathsheba Everdeen is a young woman and she inherits a farm from a relation of hers who has died, so she ends up being a woman running a farm, which in itself is something quite unusual in the Victorian period, even more unusual is when the moment she gets to the farm she dismisses the usual manager and says no, I'm going to manage this farm myself, which is awesome in its own right. The book follows the way she settles in this new place and her running of the farm and also her relationship with three men who are all in love with her. One of them is Gabriel Oak, who we encounter in the first sentence of the book, who is one of the loveliest men in literature, also competing with Giles and Diggory Venn for being the best men in Hardy in terms of their loveliness and their interestingness of character. He is a wonderful character, he is steadfast, he is constant, he is devoted to Bathsheba, and a bit like Diggory Venn in The Return of the Native, he is selfless, and even when he knows that Bathsheba is out of his reach and a different social position to him, he really just wants to help her in any way he can. But at the same time, although Gabriel Oak is kind of devoted to Bathsheba, he also recognises that she's not always right and that she has her flaws, and that's something I love as well. Gabriel Oak is a shepherd, by the way, that's also important. Another man vying for the affections of Bathsheba Everdeen is Mr. Boldwood. He is quite a wealthy farmer, he's more more like a gentleman farmer. He's a bit older than her, but he also becomes infatuated with her after she plays a trick in which her and one of the servants at the farm send him a Valentine's Day card, which he then kind of takes a bit too seriously and everything kind of goes on from there. He is a fascinating character and a lot of the kind of drama of the book takes place through him. And there is the character of Sergeant Troy, a fascinating character, one of those characters that you don't like and yet he has moments of such pain and poignancy that you have to feel for him in some way. I think he is a really, really interesting character. He is a soldier and when he appears in Bathsheba's life, he has all this kind of glamour and fascination in him. She's also very physically attracted to him, which is something very important, and even though she knows perhaps that he is not the best man in the world, she can't escape this kind of attraction she feels towards him. So there's all of that romantic drama going on, as well as various things about the Sheba trying to match with the other farmers in town, trying to keep up with them, trying to keep her trade and her business alive, and all of the various complications and disasters that can go with trying to keep a farm alive. It is such a brilliant book. Things I like about Far From Madden Crowd. One is the character of Bathsheba. I don't always like her, I don't always approve what she does, but like some other of Hardy's great heroines, like Grace from the Woodlanders, or like Ethelberta from The Hand of Ethelberta, even when you don't approve her actions, you can kind of understand why Bathsheba acts as she does, and you do still respect her and like her, because she is running a farm in a world where men run farms and women don't do that. And she's smart, she's clever, and she is for the most part good at her job, and she makes people like her, and although there are a few incidences where she struggles with the farm work and she does have to turn to Gabriel Oak for help, for the most part she can do things herself, and she's a really important and interesting and strong character. 
and I really like the independence she strives for as a woman working in this industry that is dominated by men. I love the whole plot of this book and the various entanglements she has with men. I also think that her three suitors are all done very very brilliantly and all bring together very very interesting characteristics. Like there's so much drama and tragedy and brilliance in this book and there are so many poignant and important moments. I think the story of the book is very very believable and I believe the actions all the characters take at various different places which I think are wonderful and I feel like there are so many important and interesting themes explored in this book. Gender is obviously incredibly vital to Far From The Madden Crowd because of Bathsheba's position and what that means. Class is also very very important in terms of the class that Bathsheba occupies and where she is hoping to go and the relationship she has with Gabriel Oak being affected by the fact that he works for her. I also think that the way that Hardy uses Far From The Madden Crowd and especially uses Bathsheba's relationship with Boldwood, Troy and Gabriel Oak to explore the connection between and also the divide between love and sexuality is really really interesting but what she feels for Troy is a very very passionate physical attraction but whether that is quite the same as love is very very complicated and the way that Hardy explores that is really really interesting. Likewise there are times when she feels for other characters very very strong love but you're not quite sure if that also contains that physical attraction or not. Hardy is like the best Victorian writer in terms of indirectly exploring sexuality and I think that's a theme that is really really important and far from the Madden crowd. I also think Fanny Robin and her story arc and all the themes that brings into play are really really interesting as well. I also think the Boldwood is really really fascinating and especially the way that his storyline kind of tiles into ideas of mental illness. So I said when I was making my Jane Eyre and Great Expectations Victorian literature course video that I couldn't think of any Victorian novel that deal with male madness and I'd forgotten about Far From The Manor Crowd because things in Boldwood's plotline do kind of tie into ideas of madness which in general in Victorian literature are always tied up with women not men so I think that's absolutely fascinating and something I love about this book and that really intrigues me about Far From The Madden Crowd. I love the setting and I love the way that Hardy writes about the farming world and rural industries in this book. I find the theme of work in general really really interesting in Victorian literature and it's lovely in this book to see so much about how the inner mechanics of the farm works especially in terms of Bashida's role within the farm and all of the things that can go wrong just how hard it was to keep that that kind of lifestyle afloat and dramatic climax of this book is brilliant the plot overall is so wonderful and the ending is superb and beautiful and makes me want to cry a bit. For a book that has a lot of misery and a lot of bleak themes and a lot of darkness it also has moments of utter beauty and moments of wonderful joy. It's such a good book. I love it. I love it so much. I really should reread it. It's been a while now since I last read it but I love it so much and I would thoroughly thoroughly recommend Far From The Madden Crowd. It is a wonderful book. If you are bored of love triangles then read read more Hardy and read this beautiful love square that is one of the most incredible things ever written because Thomas Hardy is wonderful. He is so so good and I cannot recommend Far From The Madden Crowd enough. Please let me know down in the comments if you have read Far From The Madden Crowd and what you've thought of it and I'll be back tomorrow to talk about my favourite Thomas Hardy book.